was completed and testing of the set was initiated. The initial phase of the dinosaur program was planned for suborbital flights along the Atlantic Missile Range using the Titan II booster. An orbital flight program would require a more powerful booster and would follow the suborbital flights. The program redirection in December 1961 deleted this sequential approach to the accomplishment of the program objectives. The Titan III launch vehicle was assigned as the new booster and Dinosaur will become an orbital flight program from the first ground launch. The major effect on the program schedule will be to advance significantly the first piloted orbital flights. The Titan III launch vehicle is the basic Titan II storable liquid-fueled booster with two 120-inch diameter solid-fueled rocket motors added to provide a new first stage. This launch vehicle will increase liftoff thrust to nearly two million pounds and inject the glider into the required orbital flight path. The Space Systems Division of the Air Force Systems Command is responsible for development of the launch vehicle. The Dinosaur Flight Test Program has been planned to achieve full hypersonic research capability. The test program will be conducted on a global range. The Atlantic Missile Range will provide tracking, range safety, and telemetry coverage during boost and the initial portion of orbital flight. Coverage of the re-entry phase will be provided by Pacific Missile Range sites. All range stations will be in contact with the Dinosaur Control Center and will report and record glider flight data on a near real-time basis. All flights will terminate at Edwards Air Force Base. Edwards will take control of the unmanned gliders for remote control recovery. For the piloted flights, approach and landing will be accomplished in a conventional manner. To implement the redirected program, a new statement of work was prepared by the System Program Office with the assistance of the System and Associate Contractors. The new work statement is tailored to orient dinosaur system development to research and development ground rules and to meet the stringent funding levels directed by the Department of Defense. The basic objectives of the program have not changed, but program scope has changed, affecting methods of program management. PERT is the principal tool for program planning, scheduling, and control of the integrated influence of time, material, and technology necessary for the completion of program objectives. PERT networks have been developed for each subsystem or principal project effort. These networks were then integrated to provide an efficient means for monitoring program status, providing a logical basis for program control. With time indexed by PERT as a common denominator for control of resource applications and performance specifications, the objectives of the Dinosaur Research and Development Program will be met on schedule. Final assembly layout planning has been accomplished. Glider external lines have been released to manufacturing, and the production phase for Dinosaur was officially started in manufacturing on 26 March. The program is proceeding toward the accomplishment of its objectives. To gather research data necessary for advanced design of controlled lifting re-entry vehicles and to explore the full potential of a pilot in a maneuverable vehicle in orbital flight during re-entry and in a conventional landing at a pre-selected site. <laughs>